I remember now. I can't remember yesterday. I just remember doing what they told me. Told me. Told me. Hey guys, we're working with World Car Auto Group today. So they told me that there was a, another class action lawsuit. Only this time, it's against Mazda. Back in January of 2021, Mazda came out with a bulletin for vehicles that were covered under powertrain warranty for oil consumption. Uh, they had oil consumption issues due to exhaust valve stem seals leaking. And because of that, they came out with this bulletin. The bulletin uh, number is 01-003-23. Uh, and it started in January of 2022, and it covered the 21 Mazda 3 built in Japan, uh, 2122 Mazda 3 built in Mexico, 2122 CX-30, uh, 21 uh, Mazda 6, 21 CX-5, 21 CX-9, 21, uh, it's, it's all of them. It's, it's all of them. with the 2.5 liter turbocharged. So the turbocharged engines, those are the ones that had it. And what we're doing is replacing the valve stem seals for the exhaust valves because they weren't built correctly or something like that and they leak oil and cause oil consumption. Since then, just recently, um, I, I, I think, I don't know for sure, um, uh, in starting in May, of this year, uh, May 13, 2024, um, there was a class action settlement um, which caused Mazda to take this bulletin and turn it into a warranty extension. So now these same vehicles have an extended warranty, uh, our warranty extension that will cover this repair for it is seven years or 84,000 miles. So if your warranty, uh, your powertrain warranty has expired, but you have uh, problems with oil consumption and you have one of these vehicles, you now have a warranty extension uh, covered up to seven years or 84,000 miles. And I believe that's from the day that the warranty went into effect, which was the day that you bought your vehicle. So if um, you have one of these vehicles and you want to find out more about it, uh, you can go to www.MazdaValveStemSealSettlement.com or you can call 1-877-231-0642. Uh, there's also a website you can find out if your vehicle is eligible and it is info at MazdaValveStemSealSettlement.com. And or that's that's an email. I'm sorry. And you can email them, and you can find out if your vehicle is eligible for this program. So, in today's shop form in the garage, we're going to be replacing the valve stem seals in this. There's a special tool uh, for going uh, on the back bracket. It's a bracket that actually goes in the back of the uh, cylinder head, and it bolts onto the cylinder head, and it allows you to push the valves down and pull the valve springs off and replace the seals. It is very tedious and uh, it's uh, time consuming too, but um, we got to get it done. So let's get to it. Just so you know, this vehicle was actually, it is covered under powertrain warranty still. So we're not going off the warranty extension, although it does have the warranty extension too. Uh, the customer got a letter uh, talking about the warranty extension and all of a sudden they decided they have uh, excessive uh, oil consumption. And we tried to do an oil consumption test and that's what uh, Mazda wants us to do, an oil consumption test. But they did prove that they had to add oil after um, an oil change had been done before their next oil change. And because of that, we're able to do this 
uh, for them. Uh, so because it is covered under powertrain anyway. And there are special tools and everything that you gotta put together and, and stuff, and I'm gonna show you that. Here we are, back in the tool room. You know, it's, it's a shop foreman's hideout. Uh, let me show you what, what we got, what kind of special tool we got here. So this is a valve stem remove and install tool set. And uh, half of it's already been built. This is the bracket that is going to go on to the uh, back of the uh, cylinder head. And these are all the various little tools. And as we go along, I'll show you how these things work. Um, you have uh, special tools for pulling valve seals out, uh, special tools for uh, compressing uh, the uh, valves down or the valve springs to pull the valve springs out and uh, have a special little uh, torque wrench. I think this is uh, four newton meters. It's, uh, oh, it's two newton meters. Two newton meter. Um, and uh, of course this special socket that I built because I mean, who has 11 16 socket that goes onto a quarter inch drive, you know? Um, anyway, um, there are tools for, this is a, um, tool for checking the uh, uh, how far down you push the uh, valve stem seal. Just make sure that you didn't push it too far. If you push it too far, this thing will um, push down like that. If you didn't push it enough, it'll be up. So you want it to be kind of like in the middle between that ridge and this ridge right here. Um, and anyway, we'll go over uh, all this and I'll get it set up. It does uh, have a special little thing that lets you install the um, the keepers for the valves by sticking this in there uh, without having to, you know, get your fingers tangled in a knot trying to get these little keepers uh, put into place. So that's pretty cool. And uh, hopefully, uh, I think I got a video that uh, shows shows it uh, working in action. Uh, it's probably better than I can show you. So let's get this stuff together and get it out there. Okay, we need to get in here and start uh, taking all this apart. Everything here needs to come apart. Uh, we need to get this valve cover off. So all these wires and tubes and stuff, they, they, everything needs to come off of here. So uh, that's gonna take a little while. Sorry about the fan noise. Uh, got the fan going. It's um, like 90 degrees here in May in the shop, you know, South Central Texas, that's the way it is. So we're gonna start tearing this apart. I got 
the valve cover off. I need to get this. This is an oiler tube. Uh, sprays oil. It, it's basically missed oil down on everything here. And um, the um, and then I got to get the spark plugs out. We got to get the thing to top dead center, and just go one by one. We need to pull these uh, rockers out and um, just start taking this apart. But before that, I wanted to show you something. So look at this right here. This is a engine and a Kia Optima. Um, one of the technicians is putting it in. It's already got the engine in here. Here's the old one sitting right here. It's a 2.4 liter. Kia Optima. So it's got the front bumper off and everything. And uh, that's how that's how they do it. Take the whole front bumper off. Put the engine in. It's got it in. Ready to go. Going back together with it. Here's the front bumper, core support. There's everything sitting right over here. So uh, yeah, and uh, last time left Last video, um, we talked about policies and procedures that uh, a technician had to go through in order to get something like that done. Um, if you haven't seen that, uh, I'll put a link up in the corner here. You can go uh, check that video out. Uh, let's get back to this. Okay, I'm gonna get all of these spark plugs out of here. Loosen them up. got to get this oil shower oiler shower thing whatever you call it drips oil onto the onto the top of the camshaft there so uh, get these loose This is the tool, and it's gonna sit right up here, right up on the top of this thing right here. And we're gonna use these holes right here to actually um, supply our um, put bolts and stuff in there to help push these um, these valves down and get these. Uh, the valve springs out uh, first we need to and, and it doesn't matter exactly which one we're gonna have to turn the crankshaft over and uh, get a cylinder up at top dead center and um, th those are the ones that we can we can do that way a um, valve does not fall into the cylinder so we're gonna bring the piston all the way up uh, eventually the valve is going to if it if it moves down which it'll probably move down because we're gonna be pulling the valve sills out and when it moves down, it's going to uh, hit the top of the uh, piston. The piston is going to keep the valve up in place. Um, so we're not going to be putting that much pressure on it. We're not going to worry about, you know, we shouldn't worry about uh, bending valves or doing anything weird like that. Um, so uh, let me find a tool um, and um, get this uh, crankshaft turned over. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is clean all this off that's what Mazda wants us to do need some brake clean on a rag here 
and just try and clean off the oil residue because I am going to put tape over this and the whole idea is to have less area where I can accidentally drop a, um, a keeper or something down into the cylinder that would be bad. So I'm going to use some masking tape, attempt to use masking tape, it doesn't really want to stick very good to this stuff. But I'm going to try it anyway. So right across the top right there. Yeah, and you can see it's not really sticking. I'm gonna put two pieces. Get this on. Stick that across there like that. Okay, and then I need to decide what cylinder I'm going to start with, and probably. One of the easier ones I'm guessing is this one, or maybe even this one. This is not necessarily the easiest one because it's way over here in the corner. But um, this one looks like it's already coming up on top of the center. The lobes are up over here. This one, I don't know if you can see that, the lobes are back. So it's probably coming up. And I'm going to go ahead and try this one. So I'm going to stick the screwdriver down the center. Down into the spark plug hole right on top of the piston like that. Then I'm going to come around and I'm going to turn the crank. I'm going to lift the vehicle a little bit. So I can get under the crank. Okay, so this one's coming down. So... is on top uh, but that one's not compression this one is these lobes are up so this piston should be up to the top also I'll stick it through there and sure enough there it is and these lobes are forward and I'll get you in there and I'll show you that So you can see that the thing it went all the way up. So this one's up on top. So I'm going to take this out. We don't need that in the way anymore. These lobes, I don't know if you can tell. This light on. These lobes are up on top already. Okay, so you can see, hopefully you can see this lobe right here. This is the top of the lobe. So it's not pushing down on this rocker right here. And it's the same way on this side. So these are both exhaust valves. This one is at top dead center, compression. Um, so we can work on these two right here. And so these are the uh, two we're gonna do. Uh, let's start with this one. This is probably the easiest one of all. So we'll start with that one. Okay, so before I really get started, uh, I got these plugs, these little flags on. I'm gonna put these in and what they do is uh, we stick them down into the drains where the oil drains down into the crankcase from the head. And we just stop those off just in case if I were to drop a keeper, it wouldn't go down into the crankcase because that would be bad. So we're just gonna stop up all the areas that um,
the areas that it will actually accidentally get stuck in or go down. Okay, I got that in there. I was trying to put it in the wrong spot, and there is another one. I'm trying to feel out where it is. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to push down the spring. We're going to use this, this right here, and get this little flag out of the way. We're going to use this to push down the spring. We're going to do about that. Oh, wait a second. I better attach this. Okay, now I got this thing attached, and I'm going to stick this down in there I'll run this down now <laughs> every single time that I start on this to work on this, um, somebody walks up and I get pulled away for some reason or another. So uh, it's just a, a life of a shop foreman. So I'm turning this and it's pushing down the, it's pushing down the spring right there. Uh, let me see if I can get that out. So there is actually a, clip in the back of the uh, rocker. It's got, has roller rockers. And there's a clip back there that I need to unclip just like that. And then I should be able to pull it out just like that. And so there's the roller rocker. Got that out of there. And let me set this aside. Okay, so you probably can't see this, so I'm gonna try and move it closer. Down inside there. is the end of the valve stem. It's right there. It's really hard to see. So I'm going to turn this more. So I can push that down. And then, as you can see, if I can hold this steady, you can see the keepers are coming loose. Okay, maybe that's loose enough. Let's see if I can get them with this. There's, there's one of them right there. I have a, one keeper on the end of this magnet. So I'll set this one aside and try not to lose it. And then let's see if I can get the other one out. It's kind of stuck. There's not enough room for a bunch of lights and push this down a little bit more. See if I can get it to come loose. Stick this tool in there. Sorry. So 
my god in. Uh, that's the other keeper right there. So I'm going to set this magnet aside right there and these are the two keepers. I am leaving them on that magnet right there, sitting right there. Because I have lost one before and it, it just didn't make any sense. I don't know how, know how that happens. Okay, uh, now uh, we need to get the spring out of here. Okay, I'm going to start loosening this up. I'll take this out and the spring should come all the way up and then I can pull the spring out. spring okay it is a taper spring it's small on the top and bigger on the bottom so that is the valve spring and then see if I can show you the valve stem seal it sits way in there in there so there there you can see it uh, valve stem seals uh, sitting on the bottom around this valve stem so now I'm gonna use the valve stem seal puller to pull that out okay uh, I'm gonna get this off of here make sure that you can see everything okay um, gotta get this big bolt out of here and then this bolt goes in and see how it just slides in there like that. This one, so the bolt goes in, and this little hook right there, and that's gonna hook down in there. So I'm gonna push it down in the bottom here. And I'm going to grab the bottom of the valve stem seal. And I'm gonna tighten this onto there, like that make sure that it's hooking the valve stem seal and you see how this is going around the lobe right there so it goes on either side of the lobe okay then in my quarter inch drive Make sure that that's on there and then i'm just going to start cranking away at this and it should uh, pull that valve stem seal right up and there it is that's all that's all we needed and there there it is <clears throat> that's it that is the culprit the uh, valve stem seal leaks oil past this seal right here and it goes down the valve stem drips onto the um, top of the valve and then when the valve opens it goes right into the cylinder and it burns uh, usually if you got valve stem seals that are leaking uh, one of the uh, first things that you'll notice is when you start your vehicle call up in the morning uh, it will be smoking a whole bunch out of the uh, out of the tailpipe so now we need to get the new valve stem seal in here. Oh, every single second. I mean, today has just been every single second. So it's the end of the day already. And um, I barely even got into that job right there. So I'm um, going to come back tomorrow and we will finish that. So as you can imagine, it's the next day. 
Um, hopefully we can get through this today without being disturbed over and over and over. So let's see where we left off. We have the valve seal out. So I don't know if you can see that in there. So right there. There is no valve seal in there anymore. And yes, there is some movement in this. In this valve. So there's movement in this valve stem. So it, it's going down, it's hitting the top of the piston. But that's the only amount of movement. And I wish I could show that to you better. But that's the only amount of movement that's there. So now uh, we need to uh, stick the the new valve stem seal on. And these are the valve stem seals. I know that I pulled one out yesterday, so I need to make sure that I didn't lose it. Uh, but yeah, so these are the new valve stem seals. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get this put in we need to push it into place then uh, we need to measure it and make sure that it's not pushed in too far or that it's not you know that it's in the right spot um, so let me show this to you this is a tool that will go down over it your valve stem seal will will be put on first this will go over it this is going to push the valve stem seal on and it has this little cup thing right here so that we can't push it too far and then once we're done with that then we will take this piece and we'll stick this in there and this this piece as you can imagine on the bottom right here the bottom part goes down to the um, to the head and this uh, top piece right here it slides in and sits on the top of the valve stem seal and it's a gauge to let you know how far it went down you know if it's if it's down too far if it's like that you know it, it's way too far you know if it's like this then it's way too you know, you know not far enough and so you want to get it so it's right in the center right in between that that little ridge right there is where you want it so um that's that's what we're gonna do so let's get this up in here and uh, put that valve stem seal in place i need to get this off because uh, this is for pulling the seal out so that one goes off this is going to go on let's see if you can see this this is going to go on the big bolt back again uh, this is what we're going to use to push it down into place I get the seal open it up I get the seal and I'm just going to stick it over the top of that valve stem just kind of push it around like this just to make sure that I'm not going to roll that seal or anything because I definitely don't want to mess up the new seal push it down as far as I can go with it. This little tube thing is going to go over the top of that. It's going to sit down in there. And then this is going to go over the top of that. So I don't know if you can see this. But I'm going to try and show you. So that's what it looks like. And this piece right here is going to go over the top of that and sit on top of the valve stem seal like that and let's make sure that it's centered and I'm going to push that down with this just to make sure it's centered on there this is going to go right into place like that you got to run this down and then we are going to torque it to, what was it? Two newton meters, something like that. Just the amount. Okay, let me get the tool. 
this tool right here. Uh, this is a little itty bitty teeny tiny torque wrench. And I'm gonna keep turning this around. Till it clicks just like that. I can do it again. So if you can see this, and that's what it's doing. It's it's not really turning it, it's just clicking two newton meters. So let's pull it back off. Get this out of the way. Pull that off. Pull this out of there. Then I'm going to stick this device into that. I'm going to stick it around like that. Make sure that it's going down all the way. This is going to be impossible to see, but I'm holding it down in place. There is that piece in the middle. It's not, I don't know if you can see it. It's not down all the way, but it's not up past this ridge up here. So that's perfect. So that's where we need it. That's the whole purpose of this piece right here, is just to um, check the measurement. So it's just a measuring device. Now trying to get this thing out, sometimes it can be a chore because they spin on each other. down in there got the new seal in place so we're going to put the spring back in so I'm checking sticking just the spring in there and let me see if I can do this without losing these keepers so this is the upper part uh, where it uh, goes on top of the spring and I'm going to stick these keepers in there. There's two of them, these two little keepers. And they are tapered. I don't know if you can see that, but it is, it's tapered down. So uh, I'm going to stick them in there like that. And I'm going to put this on top like that so the spring is just sitting in there sitting in place and it has those two keepers sitting right there on the top of the top of that washer so now we are going to use a different tool so this tool right here is going to push the spring down this tool right here is going to separate the keepers as it goes down in there and this thing will pop up and as the keepers meet the valve stem it will keep the keepers from popping out of place this one this thing that sticks down in the center right there will keep the keepers from popping out of place and actually help them pop right into place. So let me see if I can get this in there. I need to get it in over top of that spring, over top of everything. Okay, just 
like that. So you can see what that looks like. And then now I'm going to put this little wire through here. Put that on here. push this down so all the while that this is pushing in I need to keep my finger right on top of that to keep it from popping out and once it gets to a certain spot then it will um, it will pop those keepers back into place and then I can pull it out and it should be together Okay, that was not it. I can feel when that uh, center piece starts coming up, like it wants to come out, then I'll know it's down all the way. So that's what it did right there. So this just came out. push it a little bit more and then I'll bring it out and hopefully if everything went right that valve spring is in place get this off of here off of there and it sure did not work okay and I'll show you what failure looks like so you can see the valve stem is in the center right there this keepers are but they did not go into place so we have to try it again and see how See how it works the second time. Pop this thing over there. Stick this thing. Well, try and get this in the place. Looks like this. This is breaking. I need to fix this so that I don't lose this piece. I definitely don't want to lose that because that's what is supposed to push those keepers into place. Um, actually, let's start pushing this down. Get a little bit of room here. Okay, so now that's back in place. Let's try this again. I can feel that the spring is going down. And this little button thing is pushing up. on this just to make sure yeah it is down all the way so I'm gonna continue to push it I probably didn't let the thing go down far enough last time so it's completely come out so I'm gonna push it down okay so that's that's my mistake that's where I went wrong so you can see the uh, valve 
stem sticking out of the top. I didn't go, I didn't uh, push it down far enough last time. So, I don't know if you can see that. Valve stem is sticking out of the top right there. So in order for the valve stem to stick out of the top, it has to be past the keepers. So now I'm gonna loosen it up. Those keepers should pop right into place like they should have done last time. definitely in place and you can see the uh, valve stem poking out right there so and the keepers are in place so I need to let's see, stick this back on without the that top on it so I need to push the spring back down and the valve and you can see roller rocker back into place. And I want to push down on the valve to make sure the valve is down all the way, just in case. I don't want those keepers to pop back off. Just to push down. Okay. Yeah, the valve just uh, popped down, so pushing it down as far as I can without getting the keepers to pop out. And it's still going down. Okay, so now the valve stopped going down. And I can get this roller rocker. And there's a little clip right here. I don't know if you can see that. There's a little clip right here that holds this rocker onto the HLA's hydraulic lash adjuster that sits back there. Just gonna push this back into place there and try to use something to push it down. Okay, then it just popped into place. Take this back off. in place right there did you see that it's back back in place like it should be so that's one <laughs> two days one's down so I'm gonna use a pin or something I'm just gonna put a little mark on this tape to know that I did that one so this is actually a job that once once you get started on it you shouldn't walk away from it because you don't know where you are where your parts are or anything like that you don't you definitely don't want to lose any of these keepers I lost the keeper before man you know when you got to wait two three days to get a little keeper just so you can finish the job it's it's really it's not good <laughs> you know you just, just don't want to have to go through that you know it's uh, hard enough to get through this it's not very easy on your back either uh, although we have a um, top side creeper that I've used before on the CX-9s and uh, it makes it a little bit easier you can lie down and work with the uh, thing of course that's not something you want to keep getting up and getting back on again um, but um, I think that uh, I have a video that will show you exactly how that that little thing pushes those keepers back in if I can find that video I will uh, put it on there for you so you can see what I'm talking about um, 
I need to, I, that's one down. I got a whole bunch more to go. So uh, I'm just gonna start going. This is how that valve stem keeper tool works. Whenever you start pushing down on it, it separates those valve stem keepers and it allows them to slide alongside and get pushed back in. And that's how it works. Okay guys, um, <laughs> I just keep getting distracted by other jobs and stuff. Uh, I will get back to that. Uh, I got a question. Um, look at this, you see this uh, little fuzzy thing right here? Customers got some fuzzy stuff. This, this right here, I gotta ask why. I mean, cause look, you see, we're trying to drive with this on and, and I mean honestly I can't I can't stand trying to drive with this thing I mean it's uh, the wheels not turning but the outside's turning so I gotta push on it to try and turn and I can just let it go and see this steering wheel kind of straightens itself out <laughs> it's, I just I don't understand I gotta turn like two or three more times than normal just to get the vehicle to turn. This uh, this has got to be dangerous. It has to be. Why? Run on down in the comments if you know why. I mean, I understand, you know, I don't want my hands to be hot or cold or whatever, but how can anybody stand to drive like this? I, I just can't. I can't do it. So <laughs> uh, let's get back to that other job. Okay. Get this thing done now.
Okay, guys. So that's all of them. Uh, I got them all done. Uh, finally, it is. It's tedious work. It really is. The um, trying to get those things in there each time a bunch of screwing the thing in screwing it out screwing it in screwing it out it, it, it does get ridiculous um, but uh, and I don't know if you saw but uh, I lost some keepers a couple times especially on this very last one they fell back behind there and uh, it's just a couple little panic moments but I did find them I, I did get them out of there uh, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, go ahead and get all this put back together uh, yeah just uh, so you know, I don't know if you saw this this uh, topside creeper right here. So I can get my belly up on there uh, because uh, it's it, trying to lean over this uh, front bumper for that amount of time. It, it, it's just the knees can't take it, you know, and my back and and <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's uh, for anybody. It. it uh, the job just takes that long to do, and uh, I mean, I had uh, um, had light batteries going out, lights going out. The battery went out in my camera. I had to replace the battery. It just it just took that long to do. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get this thing put together. I'm not gonna bother uh, uh, filming that. It's the same same as taking it off, just uh, putting it on, just in reverse. And uh, I'll do that right now. Okay guys, I um, got it running, everything's running really good, I got no smoke, nothing like that, um, nothing leaking, I uh, got to make sure that those valve covers uh, don't leak and uh, whenever you put them on, sometimes it's easy to roll the gasket in the back there, And um, but uh, I double checked that, everything's good, it goes running, now I'm going to take her out on the road and See how she performs, make sure it's not smoking out of the back or anything like that. Um, yeah, there's uh, one thing, one other thing that I wanted to show y'all. If, uh, if you watched my last video um, that dealt with the uh, Kia engine replacement, and uh, it was a lot of. Uh, a lot of policies, procedures, and stuff like that. And um, that engine actually came in, and one of um, our other technicians, Hector, is actually working on it. And he just ran down that other way over there. But th here it is. Here's the vehicle. It's already got the engine out, and just uh, ready to put the put the new one in. So that was quick. It was only uh, two days or so. As a matter of fact, this is a. Yep, this is the engine right here. So it's already going in. So uh, that's pretty quick, pretty quick turnaround. Um, and uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and get this uh, one on the road and uh, make sure everything's good and it'll be buttoned up.
<laughs> oh man, let me tell you. You remember the remember those Mazda 3 speed, Mazda Spic, Mazda 6 speed? Those vehicles. Yeah, I mean, put an aftermarket turbo in them. Man, those things were fun on wheels. Let me tell you, this thing, it kind of reminds me of that. It really does. Um, Sky Active um, 2.5 liter turbocharged. That's nothing to frown about. You know, I have not seen one of these things modified, but I guarantee you modify one of these, it's gonna be no different than those Mazda Speed vehicles. And uh, talking about fun on wheels, look at this. Yes, it's the mystery vehicle. And uh, we're gonna be getting to that soon. So if you haven't subscribed yet, man, I encourage you to subscribe because this is gonna be fun. And this is gonna be a revival. Uh, it's been sitting around uh, 16, 17 years, hasn't been uh, driven or anything. We're gonna get the thing running, driving, see if we can do some donuts, some burnouts, and uh, just uh, have some fun with it. I got a lot of plans for this thing, not just the revival, but uh, life you know um if uh y'all uh have any uh issues with um oil consumption in your vehicle you know run on down in the comments and let me know about that um all the information that i talked about in the beginning of this video for the warranty extension um for uh, mazda's warranty extension on these vehicles i'm gonna go ahead and uh, put it down in the um, description area and uh, you can uh, check that out if you want to find out more information see if your vehicle qualifies um but other than that we're done thanks for sticking around and i'll see you in the next one